Hello, I hope everything is working fine because I spent about an hour trying to set up everything that I wanted. So the main difference from previous stream session is that currently I'm trying to add additional filters uh, on top of my voice so that S sounds wouldn't sound that s -y, I would say. And also I'm trying to remove some unnecessary noise from my room. But that's the boring side. So what uh, what was the ending of previous stream? I said that I will do some small things uh, beyond the screen because I don't want to spend time doing it like visually in front of other people because it's GitHub, it's creating special image, not very special, but just an image, square one. And I will upload it, uh, all the stuff to GitHub so that everyone can use it without changes from previous project, because for obvious reasons, they can be difficult to manage. So that's it. And my plan for current stream, I would say it should be about half an hour, maybe. Uh, I wanted to approach uh, uh, an idea that I want to move around squares and I want to move one square on top of the other. And if they collide somehow, then one of them should change color. Uh, this should be extremely difficult, but I'm not sure how many steps steps this would require. Uh, also, all the changes will be uploaded to GitHub for this particular hitboxing project after the stream would end, after some time, because I need to sleep too. So, let's get back to programming side of things. And I would add some rain. It shouldn't be too loud, but it should be still some 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 thunderstorm, some stuff in the background. So when I want to work with some simple project that is related to this Java and graphics and stuff, uh, I have repositories. It's like special uh, places where I can keep all the code necessary for playing around with it. And each bundle of code has its name in just a second so that I can easier so that I can have easier time understanding what's what is it all about so the first one it's about I guess it's a small game I'm saying about this Vercus Vercus I'm not sure how it should be pronounced just random name uh, the second one musical one it's about sounds and how you can play them and there is also some uh, collision detection used for this and the third project that is currently used for streaming stuff is called hitboxing this yes, that's the name i gave it last time so i want to copy it and use it for my experiments so again there is a green button code and there is this copy url copy it nice so then I go to my IntelliJ Idea Community Edition. It's not some paid stuff. It's just you can download it, use it. It should be really nice. So I want to get from VCS, almost VCR. Yep, I want to save it in this directory. And also I should have URL. Yes, I can use right click here. So I used Ctrl V for actually pasting the URL. Hitboxing, smash that code, github.com. Yep, sounds correct. Let's clone. Mm -hmm. Do I trust? Probably yes. I do say the trust. And again, move to separate screen. Nice. Make it a bit uh -huh, like this. So, if someone can remember the structure of these files, there are multiple folders. There are main files that we use. The first one is a readme file. 
it contains some information about the plan for this project to move a rectangle with arrow keys on your keyboard and try to collide with other rectangles or at least one rectangle oh yes so uh, Intel GD uh, understood that there is build gradle file because I'm using a special piece of software called dependency management system and build system called gradle and this gradle file actually says that I am using libraries like JDX for my experiments and when I'm running this stuff my ID downloads all the necessary files so that I can just click so that I can just find this folder called desktop then folder SRC and here I can see desktop launcher I can see this green triangle I click one of those run desk top launcher main because this thing says main you can see it right now but it's like this then what a huge window let me make it a bit smaller yeah it's failing but it's fine tints 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 yep but the problem is that this is a circle and this is a square and that's not the stuff that I wanted to discuss right here uh, I have multiple ways multiple steps or multiple things that I can play around play around right now uh, but and I actually have no mo main priority for this so let's try to have an idea what are we doing as I said uh, we're using special way of uh, structuring our program it's called uh, it's not an event loop but uh, it's actually called a game loop uh, a loop is sort of like a cycle which repeats itself goes on and on and on and on until there is special condition that says that stop stop this madness we should exit here and never start this again and first step for such cycle is to actually set it up set all the necessary components libraries make interactions with operating system and other important stuff so the second phase is actually looping through the same number of actions maybe not actions but uh, we definitely each time we want to draw something on our screen we should think about these things was there any input from keyboard from controller for something else like mouse should we exit maybe escape button was clicked clicked pressed uh, if uh, we actually changed the position of our avatar on this application has it collided with something is it necessary then based on that we should somehow change the state because every time we want to draw something we have to have like coordinates of the stuff that we are trying to emulate and then we actually should use existing facilities to perform our drawing procedures it may sound more magical than it is because uh, draw something uh, in case of a person it would require a pencil pen a paper and he can draw something and then he just get or she just gets another piece of paper and then you can get multiple sheets of paper and you can make an animation in case of computers it doesn't work like that it's really uh, it's really specific to the way uh, computer screens are working and the way computers are organized so as if you know there is this graphics unit and central processing unit and there is a frames so technically if you have something like a screen in front of you uh, it, it's just an array to the array of uh, LEDs some glowing thingies 
and there are three channels like red, green, and blue that are glowing with different, I would say, power. And as each of these pixel, as we call them, uh, has its own color, they should usually change, right? So if you move something around, like there should be many, many redraw operations so that you can see that something is actually interactive for you, for your input. So some program should keep uh, information that this particular screen uh, stays in this side of this pixel array. And when, for example, you can see this cursor that is changing, I would say blinking, some program should actually cycle through this animation, like yes, no, yes, no, and that's it. When you're trying to write a game, you technically, technically trying to recreate all this functionality. But we want to do games, right? Hmm, just a sec. Not some boring interaction with some drivers and operating systems and OpenGL and so on, so on. So that is why we're using some library uh, that should save us a lot of time. But still, we should know at least some bits of this information, like what is this library? As I know, it's libgdx. Yep, it's a cross-platform Java game development framework based on OpenGL. Yes, works on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, and your browser and iOS. Yes, you can actually find games made with this. Oh. After over five years, we are proud to present a new major release, version 1.10c. When did it happen? Interesting. Oh, it happened this year. Hmm. Probably I should upgrade to it. I'm not sure that it should be really necessary for me, because I guess most I guess m most uh, like ideas and methods that were written wouldn't be changed. Okay, yes, so this is uh, the library that I'm using and you can find plenty of documentation of how to set it up, how to start. As you can see, there is a simple game project that you can actually try to run. But the trick is I'm not... I'm not saying that it's the only way to do stuff, I'm not saying that it's the best way to do stuff, because for me, the interesting side was how can I use it to think about the problem that I have. So I have two rectangles in my imagination, and then when they collide, I should understand it somehow. In my imagination, some of them, or at least one of them, should change color. And when I'm thinking about actually implementing it in code, there are many, many, many small details that I should think about in the beginning. And when all the stuff is working as expected, I can go to actually create this stuff. So what is the technical stuff? Uh, I generated all the code necessary for this libgdx stuff in this main method creates configuration, it says like what will be the dimensions of an image, what will be the title of it, and starts stuff using class called hitboxing. This hitboxing class extends special helper class, uh, which forces it to use multiple, I'm using control here, uh, it forces to implement multiple methods. The most important is create, Render. Ah, dispose is necessary, but it's not that interesting. So, control, bracket square, left one. Again. No? Seriously? That's boring. Okay. So, I can see. Sit up. Nope. So, this is one. Let's create. Huh. Calculate. This one is render. 
and the third one dispose these are the most important methods that i should think about before i can do anything cool so one of them the create is the initial step in our game loop here i create all the necessary stuff for actually calculating position for uh upload like for downloading not well for reading all the necessary graphic files that i need for my program also setting up some colors maybe some other stuff yes and the stuff if you can see something really weird some like jdx inputs and inputs process or something you should know that i probably googled some stuff uh, just a second don't want to be super stupid but i did it again closed it yep oh nice so yes uh, if I think that I need some help, I just say GDX input example. And if everything went okay, yes, for example, games from scratch, you always can find some sort of a resource, some sort of an article, because it's like all Java library, it has enough documentation for you to play around. So I can see, yes, set position, dispose, render, yep, something. And how, oh yes, you can see JDX input is key pressed. That was the approach used here for an example of how you can interact with keyboard. And probably, yep, that's the mouse. Event driven keyboard and mouse handling. Yes, you can see this JDX input set input processor. Let's try to find this particular thing. Aha, uh -huh. so yes, there is some Reddit stuff. Oh, and this, that's the official documentation. It's like from the same domain. And you can see it's an interface to, to the input facilities. This allows polling the state of the keyboard or the touch screen or the accelerometer and some backends, desktop, GWT, etc. The touch screen is replaced by mouse input. Now that's nice. So if you think about something and you think that maybe I just need a YouTube video, you can always check some documentation using your search engine that you got. Or maybe some site like Stack Overflow it should also contain a bunch of information for this. So yes, here I set all the necessary stuff so that I can hit space key or I can check that space was pressed and pressed off unpressed eh, boring handle keyboard input who would call this oh yes it's like from this piece of text on a second phase of actual loop iteration in our loop we should check our input and i do it right there in render uh, method. So when you see this, like high level uh, description of what is done inside game loop, uh, inside lib JDX, you start this something with LWJGL application that uses this class that starts with create and then moves to method. And this is the main uh, step in game loop. It just renders, 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 and renders again. We have a fixed timestamp, that's fine. And here you can see that first there is a check if we should exit our application, and the second step is checking if uh, something happened on a keyboard. Maybe it's not super helpful, but it's still like this. So let me start. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice. And when I hit escape, everything exits because I check for escape. Uh, I've made some rather difficult structure that every time something happens with keyboard, I have an internal map structure that contains all the states of existing buttons. Because in this way I can uh, 
if, if you press a button, for example, an arrow to the right, uh, I have no... So every time you use it for calculation of a new coordinate, coordinates for your avatar, you shouldn't like... Un, like Just a second, I'll try to visualize it. So you say like, you press right and it just moves right. You press up, up I said, and you just move up and you say left and you move to the left. If I said something like when you uh, used one like direction like right, you should immediately call it like used and remove. And next time you want to move to the right, you should click it again. But why would I do this? I want smooth movement. And smooth movement is additional pain in the ass in all these technical terms like with timing and interpolation and something. But it doesn't matter. Uh, what I want? I have a texture that I'm loading here and currently it's the circle one. You can find all the necessary assets in assets and this player PNG. That's the circle. I used my graphical editor and made a square because why not? So let's change this to square. All right, right. Okay, so how is looking now? Hmm. As you can see, collision detection is still working as if it was a circle. And that's not correct. Yes. It's like, like a tank. Without way to shoot, but still like a tank. Not like a piece of tuxedo. I don't know. Or square pizza box. So yes, I can move a square because I have an image. And that's, that is a place where I... Uh, upload this image to my program so that later I can use it for actual drawing and if you really want to know the details of drawing stuff it's called rendering in graphics like department this is an entity I don't care uh, dispose poly batch render yes I have a section for rendering I have this circle entity it's not a circle exactly, but I draw it like this. Radius. Radius. Why would I use radius? Set one, yes. And here you can see there is this batch thingy, then there is player sprite draw, and then we close the batch to actually perform all these operations. It's necessary for actual cross platform stuff that libgdx is providing to you so that's why it may be a bit clunky but it hides the complexity of mac os android ios that all use different names for the same stuff when you want to draw it draw 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 it so set origin set bounds so there is a player sprite what is a player sprite? It's probably... Where is it exactly? Mm -hmm. Player texture. Yeah! So yes, player texture. The one that I actually used here. So where is the thing that is about collision detection? Let's check it out because it's not working as expected. Why it's radius? Should it be radius? Play sprite? Shouldn't be like this. Hmm. Radius is not bad. Ah, okay, fine. Set origin center. Okay, what rotation? Draw batch. Where are coordinates? Okay, there is width. Fine, fine, okay. So, 
as uh, square has same length for width and height so is the circle nice and here we say that we have a player structure that actually contains x and y coordinates and we subtract player radius and then say set origin center that's some trick to make it to make an image uh, rotate properly there is like I I can show it to you by I'm sure that it will be really easy to understand but if we remove this stuff maybe it's not necessary maybe I'm just joking with you and X and Y should be enough and radius and height is correct then after we start an application give it to me give it to me and I say move to the right everything is expected move to the top but what do I say I want to move to right and to the top at the same time Actually, it's fine from my perspective. But. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can see that for some reason, uh, collision detection is absolutely broken. Uh, the idea is that. Uh, I'm not sure that it's easy to understand it that way, but. Collision detection, this Im imaginary uh, squares, it's calculated in one place and then you can use different number, like different coordinates for actually rendering stuff. So if you somehow break this synchronization for data, you can get to a situation where you see one thing but don't understand why it's happening. So in my case, I made it like that, that I, I have removed subtraction. So currently uh, drawing happens a bit uh, if left bottom is zero, zero. So everything moved a bit to the right and to the top. Yep. So we should, by doing this, yep. If I move it like this, nothing happens. If I move it like this, yes. So this is not so obvious, but without it, I would have incorrect drawing based on the stuff that I'm trying to calculate how it behaves. So this is where that we draw rectangle and trapezium. So, okay, rectangle, tangles. We still have this trapezium naming. I would show you later how we can change it because we ain't using trapezium stuff at all. So, yep, play a sprite. We have bounds. Bounds, nice. We have, I guess it's a redrawing part to optimize something. Okay, drawing, that's fine. Drawing happens properly. Oh, just let. Let's check if circle collision detection ha happens again. Yep. It's, it's still not great, but at least it's something. Something closer to what we calculate inside of our program. So we calculate blah, 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 handling, blah, blah, blah. Calculate player collisions, trapezium, trapezium collisions. This one just makes it, uh, just blocks uh, user avatar from moving from the screen. So you can move up, 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 and it goes away. That's stupid. So this blocked in this step. And the interesting side is this calculate trapezium collisions. How are we gonna do this? Okay, we have this player that has XY position. Nice. And each of our rectangles that we created, actually one for now, it was created on create step, right? Yes, set up trapeziums. Yep, and uh, let's check. And where is it? Okay, so these are four points that 
like describe the rectangle that we plan to interact with. So polygon, something like this. And we make two versions, one of them for colored, one for them like collided and non-collided versions of them. And we keep them as special structures called lists for easier usage. Because each time you want to calculate if your uh, avatar actually collided with something, it has to iterate over the list and check. Does it collide? No. Does it collide? No. Let's see if this collision stuff is working as expected. Calculate trapezium collisions. Yes. Okay. So I have this state of trapezium vertices size. Okay. So it's like size of one because I have exactly one rectangle. What's next? I, ch I get the first uh, rectangle and I get its points and call them vertices. Nice. Player center in polygon intersector is point in polygon vertices. Okay. Uh, okay, it's like I create, no, am I creating player center in polygon? Okay, so I have this array, right, vertices for rectangle, then I have x and y for my player, and I check if the center is in the polygon. If yes, then it's like Super easy. Vertices inside player circle. Yes, so I'm not sure why I did it that way. Maybe it was easier for me to understand. So the first step is uh, the point, the center of user inside the polygon. Is it, is it there or not? Okay, next step. Uh, is any of points that is that that are part of rectangle are there inside my circle and I probably use some easier math math like line distance okay I check the distance between x y and vertices do it for all of them and if any of them are there it means that there is an intersection but what if, what if player center is not inside the rectangle and there are no uh, like vertices inside my player avatar? What should I do here? There is something tricky. So there is intersection loop. Again, I go through... Yes, I go through all the data in my vertices array. I create vector, vector. Why would I do this? Okay, last vertex, vertex. I ah, like vertices, vertex. Okay, like last point, it's edge and it's very first vertex. I don't understand what the hell is going on. Intersect segment circle. Mm -hmm. So that's probably some mumbo jumbo. Let's try to think about it like this. Mm -hmm. If any, uh -huh. so the idea is there are three separate conditions: two easier one and one half complicated, which uh, checks if there is any collision. If collision happens, then we say that this rectangle should be drawn as active. And if there is no intersection, we say that this particular rectangle should be drawn as inactive. Just for easier uh, d like description. So when we say vector, we can't actually create a vector with only with only two. Hmm. With only two numbers. Probably requires more. Mm -hmm. Yes, so as you can see, this is the start, starting point of our vector, and this is the second point of our vector. Uh -huh. So we start from length 2, 
Yes, because there are four vectors, right? Oh, I think I understand what's the idea here. Uh, so, either there is a point inside circle, or a center of a circle is inside a polygon, or there is an intersection between a line that is part of a rectangle. So it has four lines, and each of these lines uh, can be represented as two points, right? So it's like left top, right top, or right top, right bottom, like this. And I check if there is an intersection between, so this is the first point, and this, this is the second point for this line. And then I just check using uh, existing library if there is uh, an intersection for circle, for my circle, yes, and for this line, start and center of my circle, square, squared radius, <laughs> because why not? Why, why should I use squared radius? Okay, let's check it out. Because, because it says in the experimentation, returns whether the given line segment intersects the given circle. Okay, nice. Uh, can I nearest segment point distant intersect? Oh, oh, it should be hell, hell of a lot easier. So I can just provide two arrays, and that should be enough. Fold array. I should just. What is fold array? Why is it like that? Why are you? Why are you like that? So navigate back, control all alternative left. Okay. Nice. Float array. Float array. So it means that in case when we want to intersect only squares. It should be much, much easier for us. So we get this float array, right? And we want to just say if it's intersected or not. Yeah, it's, it would look like horrible, but bear with me. Uh, so, for example, now I say player center, nope. Uh, player collided with rectangle and I say for example false then I want to say that in case this is actually true why not cannot find declaration that's really bomb yep so yes, I pasted this particular name in case it will be somehow true. Tr trapezium will be set active. Let's check, would it even work with this modification? And who would think of it? Yes, it's working. It's not actually colliding with anything, but still drawing as expected. Okay, so do I have direction there I hope yes so what else do we got here uh, I am not sure that I need radius no I need radius but for different stuff mm -hmm. there will be these thing okay so as I said there is this player collision angle equals to intersector intersect intersect polygons no I want to intersect polygons 
all right so there is this fault array so float array avatar new or maybe there is some helper um oh nice so if i use them new float nope zero zero f or you do know that it's ah okay nice is it fine it's fine okay that's the first one and float array rectangle float array with vertices and if we do the stuff as we supposed to do it it should be like this so there should be avatar and rectangle so what do we get here there should be some thing like x y x y x y x y yeah it's so let's pretend that it's a left top corner so it will be x plus no it should be like minus radius and plus radius then we should move to the right radius steel plus radius then we should move let's move it like this for easier readability so then we say we still want to be on the right side then we want to say we want to be closer to bottom then we say we want to be left side also bottom and radius okay avatar rectangle and with this this line is actually unnecessary for us we just need to add type boolean avatar what i'm doing right run yes i'm doing run here nope yep so that's it as i said i made two arrays one of them for our player and the second one for second one for rectangle that i'm planning to intersect it with i get the result player collided with the rectangle use it for changing activity for rectangle now let's test it mm -hmm. okay so let's move to up and a bit to the right to me sounds well a bit a bit pixel perfect but i'm not sure that i can actually control it i would need some debugging to be sure that it's colliding the way i expect it to be yep and of course there is an issue that you can move something like like this and it's drawing incorrectly because currently it says that my avatar is always as a square and not rotated square if i want to rotate it i have to use some additional math here i either should use an approach where i use some sine cosine uh, multiplication to get the value that I need because I know it's like 90 degrees rotated nothing else or I can use a bit of a math to calculate actually the vertices but 
I would say I can do it next time. And currently we will just check, do we actually have in this interesting, yes, we have rotation and it's float. Okay, if it's float, what kinds of float it can be? It's kind of nice that it's float, but but not not in the way that I expect. So it can have. So there are three sixty degrees of freedom, right? If I move. Oh, okay, yes, I was incorrect. Uh, there is a rotation for forty-five degrees. Yes, that's why it has this shape like diamond. So to achieve that, well, the idea is like this. I need to rename some parts of this code because it's difficult to understand what is happening if I'm using same naming like trapeziums everywhere while there are no trapeziums inside and also using things like vertices or some other stuff I'm not sure that it's actually helping me in any meaningful way so this part should be changed but it's it will be done not on this session so let's wrap up what have I done today I started from a project that uh, was moving around circle shape and I used circle tricky detection to check that my circle was colliding with rectangle this is unnecessary complexity in when I'm trying to check if my rectangle is colliding with another rectangle so I changed all this code to well not so simple yet but shorter version that uses library for libgdx that intersects polygons uh, I'm not sure that it's really interesting to dive deep right now into intersecting polygons because probably it's like trying to check if there is any intersections between lines represented by two dots yep and like doing it in loops but we all always can check inside the actual implementation of this library if you're unfamiliar you can do stuff like let's take this so okay you have this libjdx right and you're probably an open source project you're probably an open source project mm, yep I can see it here if it's like this then yep I can see code here nope it's not what I want intersect polygons let's check it out can I find it G intersector math intersector intersect polygons Ctrl F no maybe oh yes it's in the bottom sorry okay okay intersects two convex polygons with clockwise vertices oh yes so there is a catch how you uh, declare your points it should be done in clockwise manner and sets the overlap polygon resulting from the intersection nice so there is an attempt to create some intersection polygon follows Sutherland Hodgman Hodgman algorithm okay so let's check it out what is all this fuss about Wikipedia Sutherland Hodgman algorithm is an algorithm used for clipping polygons nice I I have heard about it yes it works by extending each line of the convex clip polygon in turn and selecting only vertices from subject polygon that are on the visible side huh interesting so uh -huh. The algorithm begins with the input list of all vertices in the subject polygon. Next one side of the clip polygon is extended infinitely in both directions, and the path of the subject polygon is traversed. Vertices from the input are, 
are inserted into the output list of the UI on the visible side. Visible side? Like, what? Ah, yes, okay. So, there is an attempt to check how... Oh, yeah, I see. So, we take, we take this line and we decide that it's not a short two-point line, but it's like infinite long line uh, that can be described by coefficient based on these two points. And it's like infinite. Okay, nice. And there is side that it's like inside the polygon and the left side is like invisible, so we cut it off. Okay, so we then move to the bottom line and remove it. Then we move, uh, for some reason we do it counterclockwise. And then in the end, we get this. So I guess if we can see that it's not an empty something, we can consider that some intersection happened. Whoa, Jesus! I guess it's, it's f at least it's fast. True, if the specified polygons. Oh, that's typo. Someone can suggest a pull request for this. Okay, is point in polygon? Oh yeah, as I said, there definitely should be an easier way to play around with this. Is point in polygon? Because if if there is an intersection, but yes, if there is an intersection, you should do two, like two iterations. One on one of them, you try to put uh, one dot inside. Uh, you, you check you have a rectangle and a and a dot, a point, and you check is this point inside something, and next time you check, uh, you take another rectangle and use separate points from the first one and do the same thing. So it's like two steps. In the first step you have a rectangle and points from the second one and in the second step you have points from the first one and full rectangle for the second one. And you check if they collide. If no, there is intersect polygon edges stuff. Oh, Jesus. Polygon, polygon, polygon overlap. Yes, insert polygon edges. If the line of <laughs> polygon a bit. Okay, so returns the distance. Yeah, it's quite short, I would say. There is is point in polygon. Uh, I guess, I guess it should be this one. Or not? Items. I guess yes. Is point in polygon returns true if the specified point is in the polygon. Blah blah blah. What the fuck is this? So at least I do know that there is source code for this and I can check it. Hmm. Interesting. I just closed tab. What was the code that I was looking at? with this interesting algorithm. It was about intersecting, right? Just a second. Intersect polygons, yep. Intersect polygons. Intersect polygon edges, yes, it was these one one. Intersect polygons, yes. The one with the same name but different implementation. Interesting. For some reason, they have really different implementations when you use different types. Okay. Maybe it makes sense. Well, that's a mystery. At least for now. Oh, yes. What we got as the result? We can move this square shape. We can make it collide with another rectangle that we specified in our code and that way we have some basics of these I would say collision detection kinda nice but we still don't have the logic for 
moving like rotating our avatar and we should add it with our next change yes and also some cleaning up of code base and that will be the topic of the next stream i guess i guess we can call it an end for now i'm not sure that anyone ever would check this particular video but i would check it because i'm really interested if our audio quality is improved uh, if uh, actually my setup is behaving as i expect and if any of topics or points that i highlighted in this video actually make sense and are useful for discussion because who knows when this is gonna be useful i wish you all the best stay safe drink your water and have a nice day